Okay, now I get a lot of requests on my channel, which is a fantastic thing and I really appreciate each and every one of you sending in your reviews, uh, your requests for reviews. But I would have to say, hands down, the most requested review on my channel has been for the wonderful Arch Linux. Now for those of you who aren't familiar, Arch Linux is pretty much the most advanced yet technically beautiful of the Linux operating systems. It is definitely not for the new user, but for those who do have experience in Linux and do want to get their hands dirty in the terminal, it is a truly beautiful operating system in the way it works and the way it runs. And I must say that straight out of the gate, I, I really like this operating system just for its sheer simplicity, for its power, for its speed, its performance. This distribution is an entirely different beast altogether from most of the mainstream distributions that the average user is going to go near. So to that end, I have installed Arch Linux here on my native hardware. And unfortunately, I'm sorry guys for all of you who prefer the lower res screencast. This one is actually going to be in 1080p uh, simply because I wasn't able to change my screen resolution down any. But however, we are running the latest software and that is one of the fundamentals of Arch Linux. One of the fundamentals here is that Arch Linux is constantly running the latest software because it is a rolling release. Rolling release simply meaning that whenever a new piece of software comes out, it is constantly pushed to the repositories. And not only that, you have the official repositories of Arch Linux, and then you have the AUR, AUR being Arch User Repository. And because of the elegant streamlining effects that they have uh, with their source code to package management systems, which I'll talk about in a little bit further. Uh, basically, you can access a package build for the source code of nearly any Linux application on the planet. So it is very, very convenient and you can literally access any kind of software you would want that's ever been built for Linux. So I'm going to have a quick look around KDE 4.8 as well as KDE 4.8 only came out last week from the time this video was recorded. But even though this distribution was a royal pain in the backside to set up, it is definitely worth the effort if you are experienced or have some experience in the terminal. Now I have used Arch Linux before in a virtual machine and also using a few Arch forks like Chakra Linux. But this time I'm actually installing it on my native hardware and using it as my native operating system. So when you install Arch Linux from the CD ISO, you are basically going to go through an NCurses uh, installation wizard, which will step you through each step as you go. Now, the only difficult part really, in, uh, at least that I found, was the partitioning. Partitioning, it is better if you partition the drives using Gparted beforehand and then jump into the install and do it from there. But once you're finished installing, you will reboot and find you will just have a, uh, you'll just have a terminal prompt. Now there, from there, you simply have to configure all of your different config files for your package management, for your network connection, and things of that nature so that you can download the packages that you want. And that's where the beauty of Arch Linux comes in. Simply that you download and install only the packages that you are going to use. So you don't get any extra bloat on your system at all. You get exactly what you ask for, no more and no less. And I know many other reviewers have said it exactly like that, but really that's only the best way to, ex to describe what Arch Linux is. So as far as ap actual applications go, it all depends on what you choose to install. Now for me, I chose to install the KDE Meta Package, which means that you literally get everything that KDE has to offer. So when you install the KDE Meta Package, uh, you basically get every KDE application under the sun, including all of the development libraries, like the Qt development libraries. You get a whole bunch of education tools. And I think for purposes of this review, I will switch back to the traditional launcher. So you can see under education, all of these applications are just simply default KDE apps that are all included with the KDE Meta Package. Now again, you don't actually have to install this. You can just install the window manager or the desktop environment of KDE with a minimal set of tools like a text editor, a web browser, that's about it. And you can install only the software that you want. However, with KDE 4.8 rolling around, I thought it would be a good time to check out how the KDE side of things is going. And it's going quite incredibly smoothly. So I'm gonna quickly switch gears here into KDE 4.8 just to discuss some of the things that I've noticed changes in. First of all, you are going to notice that Nor uh, that Dolphin, the file manager, is a lot more animated now. When you move your uh, when you move your icon size around, it's it smoothly fades in and out, and it has some nice animations there. And uh, because of the fact all the graphics here are SVG based, uh, they're all very scalable and it looks very very pretty. Dolphin is constantly getting better and better, in my opinion, and it's actually becoming 
a lot more uh, nautilus in the sense that it's not half as complicated as what it used to. Uh, they've really been able to tone it down and made it look quite unintimidating and simple to use. Having said that, you still have all the options that you used to have with Dolphin and you can configure it however you like it and however you want the views. Also, one thing that I have noticed is some improvements with the KWIN compositing. KWIN, if you're not familiar, is the sort of the effects manager of uh, KDE. They do develop it from scratch along with uh, KDE, so it is kind of like a fundamental component of KDE. Uh, and they have been improving it constantly, but I think with this time around, I've really found the desktop effects to be very smooth, more so than usual, and, and more importantly, it doesn't hamper the desktop performance overall, so it's very nice and it works exactly the way you would want it to. You've got a lot of different effects here to choose from. I've only got a, I've only got a handful of moderate ones enabled, but things like the scaling effects, things like the scaling effects and uh, zooming out your desktop and things like that all work just dandy. And it's good to see that working out of the box with no configuration necessary on my part. Also, the power management has also undergone a bit of work since the last KDE release. And now KDE uh, manages its own power settings and you've got some simple settings here that you can configure what you want your computer to do as far as sleeping or turning off, or if you're on a laptop, what you want it to do when the battery hits a certain mark. So that's all fun stuff. And you can see here, I've got some different uh, profiles here set up. And I've also put a, uh, a script here as well to throttle the CPU down. Now, one thing that I haven't covered in KDE before is the activities. Now, activities, if you're not familiar, are basically sets of applications and, uh, and settings that you can use on the Plasma desktop, which is the overall environment that, uh, that are catered for a particular task. So you can create your own activities, but as an example, they've got photos activity here. So you enter into photos activity and you can see that I've set it up with some nice photo wallpapers as the background slideshow. And then I've also got a slideshow of wallpapers down on the side here. So then what you can also do is set it up so it will automatically launch your photo applications like Digicam or Gwenview or GIMP or whatever it is you want to work with. So basically it's just a shell. It's just a set of applications and, and settings and Plasma desktop widgets that you can use to get your task done in the most efficient manner. Now, the other thing is that it does take up a little bit of RAM to do this. So you can simply stop one activity and move on to the other, or you can toggle between the two seamlessly. And as you can see here, I'm just switching between my standard desktop and photos. And you can see I've paused my desktop session. So I, now I am just in my photo session. Then when I get, uh, then when I'm finished doing my photos, I can come back to my desktop and resume exactly where I left off. So it's kind of like a modern evolution of the virtual desktop type idea. So it's a pretty groovy effect and they've actually had this since about KDE 4.6, but I just haven't really looked into it in the past, but they, it's good to see that the integration is getting tighter and they're making it a bit more obvious showing this uh, activity manager icon here by default in the default KDE setup. Now, the other thing they've done is consolidated the notification panels down the bottom here. So you can see that uh, they've really just minimized all the ones that you're not going to be clicking on on a regular basis and only showing the ones that they think that you will be using on a regular basis. Now, all of this is configurable, so you'll be able to change which ones you want here constantly showing. Then, of course, you've got all your notifications like uh, and they've categorized them into all the different categories of notifications that you have received in the last couple of hours or whenever it was since you logged in. Now, switching gears back to Arch Linux. Really, Arch Linux is an incredible operating system by it, by itself with its default uh, repos. Basically, you, you manage everything through the Pac-Man package manager, which is all, again, terminal-based. You can install GUIs for the package manager, but some of them are officially supported, some of them aren't, so you'll need to exercise caution there. Basically, when it comes to Pac-Man, it's a simple command like pacman-syu, and you can update the entire system and check to see if there are any applications that are there for updates. It'll sync all of your repositories for you and let you know if there is any new software available. You can, of course, configure your mirrors, which is, again, another important thing to do if you're going to be using this operating system. And, uh, and basically, most of your... Uh, most of your configuration file editing is going to be done through either Nano or VI. They give you a choice at install uh, as to which text editor you want to use. And for me, I prefer Nano just because it's simpler and it's, uh, it's what I'm used to, quite frankly. So whenever you want to uh, edit one of your config files, you simply come in here, enter the configuration file that you want to edit, and you can see here that this is the file that we're going to edit. And so you can configure all different, all the different elements of the Pac-Man package manager, and it's all quite accessible, well explained. And if you don't get what you see, which nine times out of 10, you are not going to get it if you've seen it for the first time, you can simply refer to their fantastic documentation 
documentation on Wikipedia. Now I'm not going to hesitate in saying that Arch Linux has some of the best documentation on the web when it comes to a Linux distribution. I've never seen documentation that is upgraded this quickly and is this extensive as what is available through Arch Linux. So even if it is intimidating, there are a lot of guides here, for instance the beginner's guide which is very very helpful if you are said beginner. And you can see here that just by the contents menu, you've got a lot of stuff to get through. Uh, now, a lot of this stuff actually just covers uh, random cases and special cases that you're probably not going to encounter, but they really cover all of the possible bases, so they try and limit the amount of questions that people are going to be asking in the forums. Oh, by the way, of course, there are forums. And there is an IRC channel and all of that fun stuff, but most of what you will need to know is going to be contained in these wikis. And actually, to be frank, when I set up this distribution, I did run into a few problems during the installation and configuration, and it was quite easy. I just sat there with my laptop with a big fat terminal prompt on it, and my tablet to the side with about five Arch Linux wiki pages open. So it definitely helps to have this on hand as you go. So I will put links to the wiki of Arch Linux in the, in the show notes below. As you can see here, coming back to Pac-Man just quickly, uh, you've noticed that I do have a few updates, even though I only updated this system about seven hours ago. Uh, you can see here that I've got a few packages here that I can upgrade, so I can simply say proceed with installation, yes, and it will download those packages and install them into my system. So I'm constantly staying up to date with the latest software, and that is really the beauty of Arch Linux. Now, if that wasn't good enough, then you have the AUR, Arch User Repository. Now, the Arch User Repository, as I said, is basically a portal to all the latest uh, packages and tools that aren't officially built for Arch Linux, but it is a community-driven repository of source code package builds that are there ready to be uh, installed into your system with a few development tools. Now, there is the hard way of doing this and there is the easy way. Now, most of us are going to want the easy way, so that is what I'm going to explain. Basically, in order to use the Arch User Repository, you're going to want to install the development tools. What you will want to do is you will want to install base devel. Now, if you didn't install that during the installation, you do have the option there. But if you didn't, it's a simple case of typing pacman dash capital S base dash devel. Once you've installed those packages, then you will have all the right tools to make those Arch Linux packages. Now, if you want a detailed explanation of how to do this, then go and check out Linux Spatry's uh, video. He's been doing a great series on how to get Arch Linux up and running. So if you want to have a look at that, then you will get some more detailed information. But basically, the objective of this game is to install Yowit. Now, Yowit is like a, a very streamlined approach to installing packages from the AUR and actually installing packages from the official repositories as well. With a simple command, Yowit and searching whatever application you would be wanting to install. Yowit Shotwell, it will search the package manager and the AUR or the Arch user repository for any packages that might be available for Shotwell. So you can see here that I've got two options, one from the community repository and one from the AUR, Shotwell Git and Shotwell the official package. You simply type the number that you want to have installed and it will run ahead and install those for you. For another example, I'm going to install a Firefox extension from the AUR. Now, as I said before, the AUR is very, very, very extensive. You can literally install anything from the Arch user repository. So I'm going to search Yowit Firefox, and you can see here that it comes up with a lot of different options for the Firefox browser. So all I have to do is just choose one of these options, and as you can see here, we've got a bucket load of them. For instance, the video download helper. So that is option 137. So I'm just going to come down here, enter 137, press enter, and it will go and fetch that package build. Now then what you want to do is just press either yes or no to edit the package build. Most cases you will say no unless you know what you're doing. Then it'll ask you if you want to continue building. You will say yes. And then it's going to warn me that I shouldn't be building packages as root, which is true. And then it will download that package build then it will automatically build it for me once it is finished downloading it, and then it will ask me to install it. And then I am all finished. And it's as simple as that, you can, you can download an application with the latest source code through Arch Linux. So for those who are familiar with the terminal and those who like an up-to-date system with the latest software and really can't be bothered installing their operating system every six months, Arch Linux is a wonderful option. You do have to be familiar with the terminal. You do have to have a little bit of Linux experience. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit more than a little bit. 
but the rewards are definitely worth it for those who are brave enough to try it. I would definitely recommend that you give it a go in VirtualBox first and get used to the installation process before you go through and install it on your native hardware. But for those who are brave enough to try it, you are going to be impressed. I'm running the latest software on this distribution, Linux kernel 3.2 point something or other, KDE 4.8 with all of its features and improvements, and I have access to nearly any type of software or any piece of software that I could possibly want. You make it Arch Linux in exactly into what you want it to be, and you can customize it to the nth degree. You can have any combination of window managers, app launches, system fonts, themes, you name it. So definitely go and check out Linux Spatry's channel. He does have a nice guide there to help new users get started. He uses Archbang as a base, but it's definitely worth checking out. Also, this week in Linux did have some uh, Arch Linux installation tutorials there, so I'll also throw some, throw some links for those down below if I can keep talking. Once again, everybody, thank you for suggesting Arch Linux, and I have finally gotten around to it, and I hope you enjoyed the review. I'm definitely enjoying myself with Arch Linux, and I'm definitely going to hang here for some time just to see how things pan out. But I'm very impressed with it. If you're going to if you're going to go to the effort of installing Arch Linux, it definitely is worth it, and I will recommend it to all of those of you who have mucked around with distributions like OpenSUSE or Fedora. It is definitely worth a try. Like this video if you enjoyed the review, and consider subscribing if you like this content on a more regular regular basis. Uh, my next app review, I'm going to be taking a look at some Android apps that I do like and use on a regular basis. So that should be coming out later this week. Thanks again for watching and I will catch you sometime in the future. Peace out everybody.